person and also Owen Corrie, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Gentlemen, good afternoon to both of you. Thank you for joining us on this Good Friday. Owen, I'll start with you. What's your view on this? Did you welcome this? Good evening, Mark. Good to hear you back on the radio. Um, Thank you. It's, um, it's, we have to reverse out of this situation that we're this little cul-de-sac we're going down with mandatory hotel quarantine before we do more damage. And the news that the EU uh, countries cannot be placed on it is sort of led to a little bit of a political spat last week. The... Um, we, I think they're push, they pushed the, I mean, the Attorney General's concern here was that they had pushed the boundaries of the, how far we can go from the European Union right to movement. And we have been pushing them since the beginning of this. We've had a very, uh, diff, a very uh, strenuous policy against in, international travel, both in terms of the advice from the government here and the requirement for people to self-isolate, which has been in there since last March. It's led to us becoming the most disconnected country in Europe uh, compared with 2019, according to the air, um, air navigation people, Eurocontrol stats, which are released every week. And this is going to do more damage if we don't um, start thinking out what is mandatory hotel quarantine? Is it going to achieve the fairly lofty ambitions that have been set out for it, um, including, you know, keeping variants out and reducing our case numbers? And it, why is no other European country doing it like this? The reason is that it's, um, it's, it doesn't actually help to solve the problem at all. Uh, the number of imported cases in Ireland is very, very small. We have 7,851 7, active cases reported last night by the HSE. 57 were imported. So it's a lot of time, energy, headspace, everything being thrown at what is being sold to people as a solution, but which probably is no such thing. And I would like to see not just, uh, you know, the, you say you asked me, did I welcome this? Uh, I would like to see the you know let's ha let's look at this because renew it we've tried it we've had our go at it it won't make any effect uh, it won't reduce cases it won't increase cases but it's actually a tremendous waste of everybody's energy. Okay, can I bring in Darren uh, O'Rourke, who's Sinn Féin's uh, transport spokesperson? Uh, good evening, Darren. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Um, uh, your colleague. Um David Cullinan, uh, the uh, health spokesperson, said the decision makes no sense whatsoever. Do you agree with him? I, I do, Mark, um, and I think it, it's clear from from Neffet. The, the advice was was quite clear, and uh, uh, in terms of of the countries that should be included on the list, and the and the reason they should be un included on the list because of the the COVID profile in those countries. Um, it's clear that that there was a political spat. And that the decision we ended up with was was a political one and not a, not a public health one because there's a wide range of anomalies within the list as a result of that and there are countries on the list that you know don't have direct flights here probably see limited if if, if any uh, arrivals uh, to this country compared to other countries with far uh, worse COVID profiles but have have mm. uh, a, a significant a significantly greater amount of travel to the country so so the purpose of it is you know a mandatory hotel quarantine regime is to drive down non-discretionary travel to zero we still have significant levels of non-discretionary travel people arriving in from from some destinations which is hugely frustrating for people mm. who are putting in such a sacrifice we can't go beyond five kilometers from our home still for at least another week darren can yeah, i sorry to put across you there can i i know you you're not in obviously you're not in government but you are in leinster house you know how these things operate how a decision like this either for or against requires legal advice the government gets legal advice from the ag now uh, you would have assumed that Stephen Donnelly would have spoken to the AG about this and got advice. Obviously, Simon Coveney was talking to the AG and he got a different set of advice. How did they not know they were at odds with each other? Well, I don't know. And, and the other thing I would say in relation to it is that the legislation that they're both referring to is legislation that isn't a month old. And in the process of, of it being enacted, 
uh, went before cabinet. The attorney general sits at, sits at cabinet. Um, they would have received advice then. They would have received advice uh, right throughout the process. It, it, it is my understanding. Um, when through both houses of the Oireachtas, the president signed it in. Um, you know, it, it, it received significant scrutiny. To me, it reeks of you know this this process reeks of a government trying to do as, as little as po as possible to, to cover itself uh, uh, with the with the public demand and the huge public appetite there is for a, a strong mandatory hotel quarantine regime, but really taking as little steps as, mm. as as possible and and resisting every step at every turn. Wouldn't be because this is a wedding where the bride and groom don't actually talk to each other. Um, I, Owen, can I come back to you? Uh, um, okay, okay. You, you think uh, um, the government were right um, um, to turn or, or to, to change or to moderate uh, what it is they were going to do with the quarantine. Who Has anybody got it right in Europe? From And, and I want you to answer that as, a, you know, as an aviation and a, as a travel expert. Where, what's the model we should be copying? Some countries have done it better than others. We've got uh, a pretty strong Scandinavian, couple of Scandinavian models that people look at, Iceland and Finland. Um, the reality is we've been doing very, very well. Our numbers in the comparative 14-day cumulative are way below the European average. We sat on the European average all through autumn, which is where we belong. And then, as everyone knows, January was when things went out of control. We went from 100,000 cases to 200,000 cases. Great deal of panic. And mandatory hotel quarantine somehow got uh, put out there by people who were, were wanted to promote it and caught the public imagination around that time. The reality is that um, there are countries that have had very strict uh, quarantine measures within uh, Europe and one of them they was tr they tried to put on the list at the Isle of Man. Another one is Jersey, another is Guernsey. They would have, at different stages, enjoyed really, really good rates that are much lower than ours. And then something similar to us, it just ran out of control and went way, way up and then had to be brought back down again. So what we see is, you know, your COVID policy and your ability to deal with it in this community um, being more important than your policy on travel, something like mandatory hotel quarantine. It's being sold to the public as a solution to the problem. Um, in other words, it'll keep the new variants out and it'll help reduce our cases. But internationally, the figures of imported cases is not that high. And the people who've coped best and um, have done it because their health systems are in very, very good shape. And when I hear Darren talking about uh, reducing uh, travel down to 0%, it, when you start trying to fix, you know, use, co use travel to blame travel, fight travel instead of COVID, and do come out with statements like that, bits of the economy that are working okay, well, stop working. Should, how do you think we should be policing this? Yeah, I, th I think there's a, there's a couple of things I would say in relation. To, first of all, the suggestion that there's some sort of happy balance uh, between um, you know the public health measures and uh, the, the the economy. You know, we, we've we've been listening to that for for over a year, and we know that it, that it's impossible to strike that balance. We know too that we're not doing adequate follow up to to identify the amount of 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 cases linked to travel. So. So Owen has quoted figures there, but we know that three people who landed into mandatory hotel quarantine last week, out of, I imagine, a very small number of people, uh, tested positive. So, so if that's a window into the amount of, of uh, COVID being imported in, well, then it's significantly higher than the figure that, that, that Owen is, is quoting there. But to make the point, I fully appreciate, and I am my party's transport spokesperson, I fully appreciate the impact that this is having on the aviation sector. But I firmly believe the way to, to, to deal with it is to put strict measures in place now to adequately support the aviation sector and its workers who are under enormous pressure and to ensure that we have those, those you know, a, a strategy and a plan mm. to, to support and recover that sector, to bring it back into a positive place. And I firmly believe that the quickest and most effective way to do that is by, is by taking the hard decisions now and implementing these, this strict regime and support the sector. OK, listen, I'm going to have to leave it at that. That's uh, Darren O'Rourke, who's the Transport Spokesperson for Sinn Féin. And before that, you uh, you heard Owen Corrie, who's editor of Air and Travel magazine. Now, uh, marches continue.